pediatrician, Dr. Melvin Morse, listens to children. About 15 years ago, he heard for the first time a child describe a near-death experience. Here at Seattle's Valley Medical Center, he's been studying children's near-death experiences ever since. When I first heard near-death experiences, I assumed that they were some sort of fantasy of the mind, some sort of uh, hallucination caused by a lack of oxygen to the brain. We did our own case control study of every survivor of cardiac arrest at Seattle Children's Hospital over a 15-year period, and our research showed that 23 out of 26 children who came to the brink of death had a near-death experience. We learned that the so-called near-death experience is in fact the dying experience, that when we die, we suddenly have the ability to communicate with something that most people loosely call God. Dr. Morse has collected drawings from many of his patients depicting their near-death experiences. This young uh, boy described his near-death experience uh, which happened uh, to him at age three. And uh, he states uh, that he went down a long tunnel we can see this sort of this tunnel that turns into light. And he said that he went to a heavenly realm. He didn't call it a heavenly realm. He just said, I went to a land where I could run and double jump with God. This young girl here uh, nearly died of a diabetic coma. Uh, and her experience has no religious elements in it whatsoever. Uh, in her experience, uh, you can see that she's on a bed. And she says that three figures came to her who were doctors dressed in white. I said, how do you know they were doctors? She said, because they were very tall and they had light bulbs in their bodies and they were all lit up with a white light. She then uh, told me that they pointed to a box at her bedside. They said if she pressed the green button, she could go with them, but she would never see her parents or family again. She pressed the red button and she returned to consciousness. This young girl nearly died of fulminant bacterial meningitis at age five. And uh, she says uh, that she floated up to heaven and she met God. And this is God. He looks more like Santa Claus. And then uh, she says uh, that these figures uh, in the corner are grandpas and grandmas and babies waiting to be born. This young girl here uh, nearly died of fulminant mononucleosis. Uh, she presented to our office in cardiac arrest we had to put a needle into her heart to restart her heart. She says that at the time that we put the needle into her heart, she was somewhere and she saw her dead grandmother. And here's her dead grandmother. She's drawn a light around her dead grandmother. She says, uh, I saw my grandmother and I was just so shocked to see her uh, because she seemed so real and lifelike and yet she had died uh, some uh, years ago. She then says, and then I was back. And I said to her, what do you mean you are back? And she goes, that's what I've been trying to figure out. Did you swallow a radio for breakfast this morning? <laughs> no. Are you sure? Yeah. Let me, I better listen and see. Near-death experiences teach us about the last few minutes of living. I have not had patients who died and then brought them back to life. Uh, that, that's not in my experience. So what I've learned is that when you die, you're awake, you're conscious, even though your brain is no longer working properly, and you have the perception of another reality. And that seems to be a loving reality that all knowledge is contained in. But what happens after that is for religious philosophers at this point, not for scientists.